In today's video, we are going to be discussing how we could use a bar model in order to solve an equation. So we're solving equations with a bar model. We're gonna start out with this first example, and it's not going to have a variable in it because I just wanna show you what the bar model actually looks like. So let's go ahead and draw what three plus one is equal to four would actually look like in the bar model. We would start by just creating a box. Now this box, the first one that we create is going to have to be a little bit bigger because you have to think this is three and our box that is only one should be a little bit smaller than this one. So this box is going to represent our three. We're going to add that together with our one. And what does that all equal? Well, all of this three plus one is equal to four. So this is how you would properly model a addition problem using the bar model. Three plus one and three plus one is equal to four. In our second example, we are going to be doing five plus y is equal to 20. You can see that this time we have a variable that we're going to have to solve for, and we're going to show you how you can use this potentially to figure out the answer to the equation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to draw boxes just like we did over here, but we don't know the value of every single number like we did for this, uh, this equation. We have an unknown, we have a variable, okay? And we can logically guess that our variable is going to be a bigger number than five. So I'm gonna draw my first box here to be a little bit smaller than my other box that I'm going to create, whatever y is going to be equal to. So let's draw this. So this is y, my other one was this is equal to 5, and what we want these two boxes to add up together and equal is a value of 20. Now, we can turn this into a subtraction problem. Uh, we know that we need to get to 20 and we have five, so what will it take in order to get me to 20? We would do 20 minus five, and this would give us an answer of our y value, which is going to be 15, okay? So if we were to redraw this, we could, we could do five, this is equal to my new y, which we said should be 15. And if we add that all together, do we get 20? And the answer is absolutely yes you do. If you add five and 15, you would have 20. 20 is equal to 20. And we know these two things are equal to one another because that's how we are drawing our bar diagrams or using this bar model. The bar model is always equal to one another uh, vertically here. So you can see that 20 is the same length, or I tried to draw it as the same length as that five plus 15 or that five plus y. So this is how you can use the bar model to kind of show or to uh, graph out an equation, or at least an equation that has addition in it. So let's go ahead and move on to what would happen if we had multiplication in a problem. For our next problem, we're going to look at modeling some multiplication or maybe some division with our bar model. And our story problem we're looking at here is Mary Kate has five bags of candy she wants to give to her friends. There are four items in each bag, and how many items are there total? So the number that we don't know is we don't know how many items that there are total, and that's what we are trying to find. And we can use the bar model in order to show this. So each of our bags, we are going to make one of our boxes. Okay, so here's one bag, here's two bags, three bags, four bags, five bags. And they all have the same number of items in them, and that's given to us in our problem, right? There's five bags of candy, one, two, three, four, five. So there's my five bags of candy, and there are four items in each bag. And this is all equal to something that we don't know right now. 
and something that we don't know in a math problem is typically represented by a variable. So we're going to put a variable down here in the bottom, which is y in this case. What does y equal? Let's go ahead and define that variable. y is equal to the total number of items. We could get more specific. We can leave it at this. And so let's go ahead and figure this out. Um, how many are there in each bag? There's four. So we would go ahead and fill this in. There's four items in each bag. And this looks like repeated addition. Or we could do this as multiplication. This is actually four. One, two, three, four, five times. So this would actually be four, if we were to write this as an equation, four times five. So four, five times. And this is equal to y. Okay. Well, what is four times five equal to? Four times five is equal to 20 is equal to y. So the solution to this problem, how many items are there total? There are a total of 20 items. Mary Kate will give to her friends. Remember, it's always important to write a sentence to uh, explain your answer to a story problem. So our fourth example here is going to be the most important to look at today because this is really dealing with what we're focusing on in this unit, is solving equations. So we are looking at 3x plus 2 is equal to x plus 8. So we have variables on both sides of our equation, so that's something new that we're going to look at. And we're going to look at how we can simplify this using the bar model. We're going to begin by just drawing the bar model as simple as possible. We're going to put 3x plus 2 on the top side of our bar model. And then this equal sign means that line in the middle, and I'll kind of show you this, is equal to x plus 8, which is going to go on the bottom part of our bar model. Because these two, two things are equal to each other, so therefore they should take up about the same amount of space. Um, in our bar model. So let's go ahead and draw a square, or a rectangle, I should say. And we'll put a line through the middle. That's our equal sign. Our top consists of 3x plus, okay, I'm going to make 3x a little bit bigger because it doesn't make sense for my x on my bottom to be the same size. And 2 is pretty small. So let's do 2 over here, make it a little bit smaller. And we'll have only 1x. So remember, Here's the top side of my equation, 3x plus 2. And I need to do x plus 8 on the bottom here. So x, okay, we need to make x smaller than 3x because there's only one of them here. So we're going to do x, we'll make it that big, plus 8. And that's how we would model this in the most simplistic way. How are we going to use this bar model in order to help us solve this equation is the question now. Well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this bar model so that we can kind of eliminate some things. If things match up on the bottom and the top, we can go ahead and eliminate those from our equation because if it's on the top and the bottom and we can take it away from our equation, we're still going to be able to be equal to one another. Okay, So I'll show you what we mean when we draw it out here. So let's go ahead and we're going to rewrite this. So 3x this is the same as 3 times some type of number. So remember, if you had 3 times 5, okay, we would have 5 plus 5 plus 5. Okay, it's repeated addition. Same thing here, 3 times x. And I don't like this because we're doing 3 times, and it's an x here. 3 times x equal to x plus x plus x. So let's go ahead and write this part of our equation as x plus x plus x plus 2. So we're going to draw our box again. Remember, they're always equal to one another. Can't change that. So we're going to change this to x plus x plus x plus 2. So we've kind of simplified this top half of our equation. We've not changed it. 
We've just written it in a different way. And then we have down here, we have x plus 8. All right, well, I'm actually going to split 8 into some different parts as well. So I'm going to take away 2 from 8, and we're going to match up that 2 with a 2 on the bottom. And if I take 2 away from 8, well, 8 is the same as 6 plus 2. So here is my 8 rewritten as 6 plus 2. And remember I talked about we're going to match some things up and kind of eliminate them? Well, look at We have an x and an x, and if we were to take those away, our equation is still in balance. And guess what? If we take away these two twos, if we subtract that away, our equation is still in balance. We have the same amount of area, and that's where the bar model can kind of be a good visual on how we're solving equations. So we're going to eliminate these. These are gone. And we are left with x plus x is equal to 6. Well, let's go ahead and we're going to split 6 into two even parts because that's what x is. x is the same thing. It has to be the same number twice, right? So we could use division. This would be 6 divided by 2, which is equal to 3. Or we could just logically reason through that. Okay, so remember we're going to split this into two even parts. Um, and we're going to have our two x's, okay, well, what is each one of these x's equal to? Well, if we needed to make up 6 and we split it in half, it would be 3 and 3. So the solution to our equation here, or what does x equal? Well, x is equal to 3. 1x is equal to 3. And we can check and see if we got this correct. So it's always good to go back and uh, kind of proof our work. So if we're going to check, we would throw 3, or we'd substitute in 3 any time that there was an x in our original equation. So we have 3 times 3 plus 2 is equal to 3. Remember, we're substituting in 3 for x plus 8. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is equal to 3 plus 8. 9 plus 2 is 11. And then we do our last part, 11 is equal to 3 plus 8. Well, that's 11 as well. And if we look at that, we have the correct answer, and we know it's the correct answer because after checking our work, we plugged it back into our original equation, and we were able to get a true statement. Now, I think sometimes I might get ahead of myself. I want to go back and make sure that we understand how we're going to use this to kind of solve equations. This is a little bit simpler of a problem and just walk it back a little bit to understand how we're going to match things up and eliminate stuff from uh, using the bar model. So here we just have x plus 6 is equal to 14. Let's go ahead and draw this into our bar model. So we create our bar model. Here's our equal sign, right? left side of my equation is x plus 6. Bottom half is equal to 14. We have an unknown, we have a value, and we have 14. What I want to do here is I want to be able to eliminate this 6 from the problem so that we can solve for x and find out what x is equal to. You might be thinking in your head, but we need to use math and our skills in order to prove that. So we're going to redraw this, and we're going to match up that 6 with a portion of 14 so that we can eliminate it, just like we did in the last problem with the variables and the numbers. So we have x and 6. That's not going to change. Question is, is how am I going to split up 14? Well, I want to match up 6 out of that 14. And what are we left with? If I take 6 away from 14, okay, 14 minus 6, we would have to trade um, trade 110 for 10 ones. This becomes 0. We don't have any left. And we would have 14. And 14 minus 6 would be 8. So that is the number that I should place here. All right. We have sixes lined up. Guess what? We can eliminate this, and my equation is still in balance. It's still equal to one another. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate the sixes out of here, 
we have x is equal to 8. Go ahead and plug that back into our equation. Okay, substitute in 8 for any time there's an x is 8 plus 6 equal to 14. Yes, 14 is equal to 14. So we know that our solution to this problem, if we wanted to write a solution set, solution set would be 8. Only number to make this true.